Hi students, welcome to Year 12 Chemistry and Module 5, Equilibrium and Acid Reactions. This is video number 10 on Equilibria and Activation Energy. So in the last video we were um, talking about collisions and collision theory and the fact that collision theory is based on the fact that for a chemical reaction to occur, particles need to uh, run in or collide with each other um, with sufficient energy in order for them to react. We have described that amount of energy that they need as the energy of activation or activation energy. And you can see whether we're looking at an exothermic reaction, forward reaction, or an endothermic forward reaction, that there's an amount of activation energy that's required in the um, endothermic direction, whichever way we're going, uh, than there is for the exothermic. Okay, now the, the absolute amounts obviously will differ from one equilibrium system to another, but there will always be more energy required for the um, endothermic reaction because it's taking in that extra energy uh, in order for the reaction to proceed. We need to therefore ensure when we're looking at equilibria that as our um, concentration of reactants drops and our concentration of products start to rise as the reaction is heading in this particular direction, that the um, energy that we have for the particles of product will be sufficient for the reaction to proceed in the opposite direction. So initially, if we look at reactants going to products, we have our maximum value and a zero value. And as the concentration of the reactants is dropping and the products is starting to increase, so we will find that there will be some particles that will start to um, reform the original reactants. And this is the equilibrium system starting to um, increase the rate of the reverse reaction. Of course, our definition of equilibrium is that the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Now, sometimes we will look at situations where we will give you a a mixture and we'll ask you whether or not it's at equilibrium or whether it's going to shift one way or the other and other times we will give you just reactants and allow you to determine uh, when and indeed if that uh, particular reaction is going to reach an equilibrium. As far as this section is concerned, and we will go on and look at a mathematical way of determining exactly what's happening at equilibrium in the next section of videos. For this, we just need to recall the fact that those three very important um, factors are affected by both collision rates and the amount of activation energy needed for the reaction to occur. And that is pressure, concentration and temperature. These are the three factors we've looked at previously in previous videos and hopefully in class as well. And they are the ones that we need to determine um, how the equilibrium system will be affected, if indeed it will be affected, and how it is going to respond as a result of those changes. Now one quick word, I guess, before we leave this, and this is looking really specifically at the effects of temperature. Now we're going to look at temperature in a little bit more detail um, in future videos because temperature is a very important factor when we're looking at equilibrium systems. This distribution that you can see on the um, slide here is called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. And you can see that there's a point where um, we always talk about the average kinetic energy of the particles. And whether or not the average kinetic energy of the particles uh, will be greater than the energy of activation, that is the energy that's needed for the particles to react. In any given system, we have a certain value that represents the activation energy, the energy above which particles that collide will react to form the product, or if they're products, will react to form the reactants. But how do we change this value? 
Well, there are two ways that we can change this value. The first we already know about is the use of a catalyst. What the use of a catalyst does is it basically just brings down the amount of activation energy. So what it does is if I just sort of artificially just drop this to a certain point and say this is the new energy of activation without doing anything else, what I now have is a much larger group of particles that have sufficient energy in order for them to react and therefore they will um, they will react and that's the advantage of adding the catalyst an alternative to this is to increase the temperature now changing the temperature um, doesn't just shift the whole graph uh, forward if you like what it does is it changes its shape somewhat as well so there will still be a slight um, skew on this graph. I've kind of drawn it a little bit too symmetrical. But what you will notice is the peak has certainly shifted forward. That increase in temperature changes not only the um, average kinetic energy of the particles. It also changes the uh, increases the average. It also changes the shape of the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution and that means you have a much larger number of particles with sufficient energy in order for them even if that uh, activation energy is the same um, that we now have a much larger number of particles that are now able to um, react because they have sufficient energy to overcome the energy of activation uh, what we will do from here is move on and have a look specifically at the mathematical way we can um, analyze equilibrium systems, and that's by calculation of the equilibrium constant. That will be coming up in future videos. Thanks for watching.